G'day and welcome to the final um, instalment, if you like, video on the eight lawnmower restos. Well, it's kind of, they're not really restos, they're kind of, what would you call them? Me commissions? I don't know. They're not really restored to original, so I can't really call them restos. Whatever the case, we have been doing that and we're finished now. So, they, look, there's still a few things. There's a couple of teething errors or issues and I just haven't got time to do them, mainly because we're in the middle of March and Christmas, oh sorry, Easter holidays are coming up in a few weeks and I need to get a little bit of painting done and a few car repairs done in that time. So I've just completely run out of time with mowers. It's gone on a couple of weeks longer than I wanted it to do. So I'm sorry, this is taking a bit longer to get out. You know, parts and all that sort of stuff. Um, do want to thank a few people. Norm, of course, on the Outdoor King Forum. I'm going to thank him again. I've mentioned him quite a few times in this. He uh, gave me few bits and pieces and lots of advice so he was really good peter taylor's another one uh also john parnas john has able to give me bits and pieces this is a single coil and cdi unit for a honda not sure what model but it's something that's probably transferable from bike to bike haven't got a bike for that at the moment but it's good stuff to have here um also taz polzagopoulos he's gonna be his lovely um manual full manual genuine suzuki one for a gs1000 i haven't got a gs1000 but well me God knows what I'm going to end up with in whatever near future. Also, six cylinder Falcon here, this manual here, um, all in beautiful condition. And these manuals are great. I've got a pretty much a full complement of manuals for lots of different cars. And it's nice having sort of adding those to the sort of technical library. Also, Galant, GCGD, Galant, GCGD, I should say. Um, not sure if they include Astron engines in these. I think it's Saturn's in the Galants, I'm not sure. Um, I haven't yet had sort of time to go through it properly, but again, lots of specs and lots of information on there, which is handy to what I do. Um, the other one, of course, is Nathan Hickey, and he, I think, lives in Sydney, and he donated a engine. And this is a, a 160cc Victor engine that's been sort of configured to fit a horizontal shaft. And in doing that, of course, you've also got the capability of turning the carburetor on its side to run them as a vertical shaft. This one's quite unusual in that it's got this shaft up here, which is what we used to use at the school um, with centrifugal clutches. Um, we can sort of back those out and that will fit over there, if you know what I mean. I think we used to take those off and put cogs on them, like little um, gears, so you could use them with the chain on the go-counts we used to make. No idea what this is like, and it sort of came a little bit later. I collected it too late to incorporate it on any of the males I've got. It's got a great flywheel. Don't know what's going on in there. I might have a quick sticky. Should we have a quick look in there? And this one's been rebuilt. That decompressor seized and it's missing the union off that. It's also um, not a rebuildable one. Um, it doesn't matter, I've got a spare. Um, looking in here, we've got some muck. I might just get a brush. Hold on a sec. Of course, we also have a um, a new head gasket. Is that oversized? Just a second. S80, is that Series 80? I don't know. But the bore looks absolutely lovely. That's a really good engine. That's a great engine. Is that a watermark there? Is that a watermark? That doesn't matter. That's a peach. Jeez, I'm well happy with that. I might just stick a bit of oil in there though. To think of it, that is a peach. Oops. It's got new rings in it too. I looked down the side of the ports and you can see they're still black. Um, that's as new. That's, gee whiz, look at that. Look at the bore. You can see a cross hatch and it's been honed properly too. That's amazing. He did say it was rebuilt. I forgot about that. So that's brilliant, and just further evidence of all the support I've had. I'm very fortunate like that. Um, some people, Grant Wickham was one of them, has donated a lot of stuff to the XC, and I've dragged my feet with the XC, but now I'm ready to get back into that too, so we can pull up Grant's lovely bits and pieces on it. I want to do, I've got to get the rubber brake lines for the back. I think I have to make the ones on the steel ones on the dip as well. Then I can bleed all the brakes and put a, trop, a tail shaft in and actually drive the car. I can move it out. And I want to put it where the XW is just so I can get to it. Because it's a pain in the neck back there. Um, and that's about it. 
So with the loose ends that I was referring to before, I'll get to those. I'm not going to do it now that I just don't have time. Uh, but whatever the case, I hope you enjoy. So we're at the tail end of our Lawmo Restos and this is the final video. And there's a few things I want to do aside from, you know, putting stickers on the mowers and testing them out and all that sort of stuff. Got to have a look at a G4 carburetor. We'll have a quick look at that. And impulse starter. And these are very heavy, so that stays in. And then you get spring tension. And when you release it, okie dokie. I've got one of these impact starters. This one is absolutely cactus and it was seized. I tried to um, use penetrating oil and then heat. And then I tried to press and I actually broke that sort of ratchet wheel thing. So that's knackered, I can't use it. Um, so it means now, until I find a better one, um, I have to use a rope starter with that wall zimmer. The other one that came off the good one, the one I found on the curbside, the Mayfair, is in beautiful condition. I actually decided not to strip that paint. I want something off it that's original. There's the spring, it's rather nasty big thing. Um, and also, I... Um, Took the lid off it to get it um, blasted, so I'll paint this in the gold. It won't match perfectly, but that's in really good nick, and that stuff is terrible to get off, and I didn't want that hydroblasted. When you blast, actually, I thought it'd be all right, but the knob got ruined. Um, not to worry, I took the one off this, and that's in good condition, so I'll put that knob on once I've painted the handle and put it back together. Um, a junkyard um, dumping ground for some old knob bits here. Uh, no big deal. That's the 125 that was sitting on the bench for so long. And a really wonderful looking fully restored one. Um, I, over, I had to take this cover off again because the spigot, the little, um, what's that called? The little thing the tube goes on was cut short. It was sort of broken short. And I thought it's going to pop off. And then you've got no compression, pain in the neck. So I ended up just putting a rebuild kit and a new lid, a new, sorry, union on it. For some unknown reason, people still think these things are worth a million dollars with broken fins. This is a peachy one I got off eBay for 20 bucks and then of course gave it to the Hydro Blaster. I've got two that are damaged, which I don't want to use. Actually three, there's one on that Wolsey mower with one broken fin of rattle can and it looks terrible but it's hidden. Um, but I wanted good ones. And so I picked this one up, 20 bucks, it's immaculate. And then I can, you know, Put the keyway in. Oh, get off there, you son of a gun. Things are hard with one hand. Have you noticed that? Let's try this way. There we go. And it's just absolutely beautiful. So I'll just check those points are all good. And then we'll button that on with the keyway. And put this one together and then it's ready for testing. Now when I went to see Norm, he gave me a bit of 5mm mild steel rod, a catcher pivot for the one that's painted in LJ Tirana colours. These two things won't fit because these were a six and a half mil or six millimetre rod. So of course I've made some little custom ones with Doran. They will press on. They're both five mil, so it's gonna be like, I don't know, an interference fit. So they'll press on both sides. I've just gotta cut that to the right length. And he gave me 400 and it's 375, I think. So then we can put the catcher door on the other one. And the only thing we're waiting on then for all these things are the stickers. Um, this one here, you know what, I didn't know what to do with it, but I had more stuff blasted, and I thought, you know what, I'll just chuck that lid in, that was given to me as well. And I don't have a tank with a centre um, lid. I've only got another, one more side lid, if you know what I mean. Um, I'm not really sure what to do with this. That's the other base that I was going to use on the 8 that I had blasted, and I changed my mind. I didn't like the finish on it. And it was just a bit sort of scratchy and a bit rough. I might paint that in haze blue, which is another BMC colour. Um, which is the blue sort of equivalent of the ceramic green on the Wolsey mower. Loose ends. This is the rod Norm gave me. Um, I just held it and a bit of silver spray and I'll try and get them over, which looks like it's going to go in. Um, just a minute. Perfect. Uh, right, so that will fit in the mower thing. I can just hang over this or hang on to that and just do the rest of it now. It's just rattle can stuff I'm using. Um, this muffler loosely resembles a machine gun. <laughs> um, 
It was all just out of cheap, it was all rusted off, it just cut off with a hacksaw, and it was really thin in some spots. What I've decided to do, I don't know what that's off, I found it in my toolbox. Um, I can just cut a groove on either side and slot it over these two seams, because it'll give me some meat to weld to, and it'll just sort of look like that. I don't think that looks too bad. The canister itself doesn't look bad at all, come to think of it. Um, every time I see something that looks like it might be a hole, it turns out to just be a bit of muck. So anyway, we'll, we'll do that and we'll weld that on. This isn't the greatest job I've done. Um, lots of overhang because originally I narrowed the footprint on that. Um, so it's kind of bad. And you know what, if it falls, well, everything's insured, I guess. But that gives us some idea, that handlebar on that orange one's wrong. Um, I've also got that little LED fluoro light thing type thing. So another three can fit under here and we'll put, or we can put, you know, period advertising and that sort of stuff there. So I, this is supposed to have clips and I've, the clips didn't come with them and what happened to them. Um, obviously not in the pack, so these are good. We'll just sort of stick it up there. Check out that for a tight squeeze. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'm going to have to get more room, I think. I mean, that table is against the wall. It's actually um, secured to the wall. Um, but, do you imagine if it all fell down to this? <laughs> that wouldn't be very nice, don't it? The wrong top. I wanted an impulse starter, and it's the wrong colour. Originally, the impulse starter was going to be the dark green, and it's also I haven't done a crash hot job in there. But I don't think at this point it matters too much. I just want to start the thing. Um, and so when we get the correct parts, we'll just pull this off and you know do it the way we want to do it there's already a block washer in that one and that should pull and release quite well Oops. so I'll just tighten these down yep perfect now we're going to put the catcher door on that thing Alrighty, my newly painted rod this is going to get scratched to hell, all hell, but I don't think anything matters. It's not going to be that important. Um, I'm just threading through. And it will have some slack in it because it's the wrong size thing, but what do you do? Zero craps in it. And the trouble with acrylic paint is it's quite easy to scratch it. So that should knock in. Before I do that, the camera's in the way. I have to reach over. Right. Fuck. Less than ideal. Um, I probably should have taken another couple of thousands off that. But it was just a little bit too tight in there. Which plug is that? Is that one of the new ones? Or is it tight? I'll just check the plug. Yeah, it's all tight. I'm using the NGK equivalent of a CJ8, it's BM6A. I use NGK in the cars and the motorcycles. Um, not that I've ridden any of the motorcycles, but <laughs> I've still put them in. And, you know, I'm just, I've never been a champion spark plug guy, but there are those that wouldn't agree, but that doesn't matter. I've got all this spare stuff and I thought, what the heck, I'll just paint it. So I etched, this is the other 18 base. I know this is the final video, but I reckon I can squeeze it in. Um, because most of the final video is just going to be about starting them. But I do want to talk about um, the carburetors and other bits and pieces. Um, so yeah, so this was the rough base. You can see it's been the grinder marks in it. Can you see that? I hope you can. Um, and I just thought, waste not want not, right? I'm going to paint it. And I found another colour, which I reckon, well, I can't get too close to that. I found another colour in the garage, it's going to work. And we are going to have a look at that right now. So 
something therapeutic about watching spray painting. Right, so I've been mucking around with paint again, just sort of touching up bits and pieces that I have to do and all that sort of stuff. Found that. This is the haze blue. And I don't know what's in here. Well, I do, it's haze blue. But the last time I opened this can was 2012. And it was when I had the blue series 2 2480. And it's just reduced paint from that car. Might just oh that's ready to shoot bugger it let's just do it let's just do it baby uh, chuck it in the gun start shooting it i'm just gonna go do it now it's in half dark i want to get this thing done though right carburetors this is either an lm or a g4 lm stands for late model g4 is the model after the g3 which is this one the configuration of this is side draft and it uses a butterfly there and the governor is a vane a, like a, a sail that sits on top that the fan pressure air pressure can close off independent of where the throttle is and that's how they're governed most carburetors in that configuration are on motorcycles higher performance two-stroke applications oh, and four-stroke and they normally use a slide um, butterflies you find more on cars anyway this is different again. This has got this weird arrangement where that's a bayonet fitting onto the engine. Your air tube or your filtered air comes in here with the throttle cable inside it. I don't know why they did that. I assume to stop the prospect of snagging. And they use a weird poppet valve type arrangement. Now what's weird about these is they're a side drive, but the air comes in one direction and comes out the other. So it wouldn't do much for flow, but motor motors aren't really about power. They're more about torque. So small ports, um, long stroke, lots of airspeed past the jet, that's how you're going to get your low in torque. I don't think these are a high performance thing, I think they're only designed to run at about, I don't know, I'm going to guess at 4000 revs, and you know, that's about all I do. These have a governor arrangement built into the end of them here, so there's three ports. This one is your vacuum port for the decompressor, so the moment the thing starts, the decompressor shuts and you've got lots of power. This one here is for a switch, your ignition wires go, one goes in this way, the other one goes in diagonally, and there's a cam inside here, so when you rotate it to stop, those two things arc out and stop the engine. Um, did I say what that does? Oh, and that's the governor, and fuel intake is here. Now the governor on these is weird, it's a, it's a small orifice on a button that sits next to the fan, or adjacent to the fan, and as the fan pressure increases, it causes a vacuum in this tube which pulls the diaphragm back and closes that little valve in there called a puppet valve. These are weird. Let me pull it apart and show you why it's weird. Whoops. Okay, that's homemade. Large spring. Yes. A really dodgy looking valve. Disc. Looks like it's out of a Milo can or something. And we've got this diaphragm. I don't care if I wreck this. Uh, what are we doing? There's a spring behind here, I don't want to damage it. Hang on a minute. I don't care about the diaphragm though. Oh shoot, that is tight as a fish's bum. Let's have a look. Can I just... There we go. Right. Okie dokie. So, let's talk about this first. When you pull the throttle... ...back, it raises this. This spider thing here. I don't know what the name of it is. Now, raising it is closed. Pushing it on <clears throat> through the diaphragm pushes the poppet valve open. And the poppet valve just looks like a valve in the cylinder head of a four-stroke engine. That's all it does. Now, when you pull it back, or turn the throttle back, sorry, this way, it closes the popper valve and the engine roof decrease. But let's say you're going through some thick grass and you've got the thing flat out. Pop it valves as wide open as it can go and the engine start to rev too hard. What will happen is this diaphragm by way of the vacuum coming into it will overpower that spring and then start to pull this thing back to close the valve. And that's how they're governed. So that's knackered, the thing will over rev. 
I don't know the terminology for these. They're fairly simple though. It says this way up, or this side down, sorry. That sits in these grooves. There's three sets of grooves. And your throttle slide itself just goes like this. Just fits in there. Now, this is weird. This is your fuel bowl, so to speak. And there's a jet, which is externally... you come back, you. Externally accessible. That should have a tube on it. G4s and LMs have a different length tube. That's all I know. Well, as far as I know. And in there is your float bowl, or your fuel bowl, your float, oily, and your needle and seed. And the needle and seed in these is just plastic. They're crummy. There are two holes. There's a blind hole. We don't look at that one. We look at the one that's got um, a passageway. Now, even with new needles and seeds, these can still leak. And Norm, who I had a lot of help from, he actually has a jig with a bunch of these G4s on it, sitting there with fuel in them, um, and a tap going up to a tank for a length of time to see if they leak over, you know, a day or so. Um, that just talks over. Yes. And that just fits back. There's an O-ring there, obviously, you can see that. And the other thing to take note of is looking at the way the carburetor sits, which is like this, there's an arrow pointing up and a horizontal line here. So you've got to make sure you get the orientation of that correct. Pop the jet in, we're good to go. And you don't want to... It's only, this is all plastic, so I'm just going to seat it down like that. These might be easier to put the throttle cable in first. The throttle cable sits on a ball and comes in through here. So I'm not sure, although I have been fitting these complete and just guiding the throttle cable in there by themselves. So that sits in like that and rotates. This side down sits in those three things there. Those three moulded channels. So that when you operate the throttle, this thing goes up and down. The switch, which is here, runs on a ramp as well, here. Hang on, Tom. Now, pop it valve. Just goes in here, if I can get it in. I failed. I'm filming you. Yeah. Hello, guys. My name is Charlie. Dad's favourite child. Um, this is Charlie, my favourite apparently child. Yes. So let me just put this in here. What you making? I'm just experimenting. Oh, with this carburetor. Oh no! Charlie. Okay. Pop the spring in. There's a diaphragm. That faces down. Push it through. The pop valve goes through. It's got a big point on it. Then we've got this stupid homemade thing. I don't even know how that's supposed to work, but it's wrong. Traditionally, these will be a disc or a smaller thing which will fit inside that rebate. That's the way the other one was. I'm just going to shoehorn this in because I don't really care. But that's not how you do it. Pop your spring in, which sits in the lid. Make sure it's located in the top. And then have this so that that is facing up because that's the best way to get to the governor. And that snaps back together and that's it. They're that easy. Anyway, I just thought it was interesting. The ignition wires have a sleeve which fits into there to make sure it locates. And that's about it. Backstarter. This is the one off the Mayfair that was in very good condition. Um, it worked well, but it did appear a bit gluggy um, when I went to put the thing. When I sort of had a good look at it. I haven't taken the spring out. I don't want to take the spring out. <laughs> Let's just say that. Uh, in the lid, there's a little ratchet. There, little, uh, what do you call it? Little dog, if you like, with a spring behind it. I'm just gonna grease in here. I've cleaned it up inside. Um, I'm not gonna get carried away with it, but all the grease I use on, whether it be cars or bikes or any of that sort of thing is always High temperature bearing grease. Uh, 
Yeah, a small bit of rain, there it is. And I think I'm going to have to push that in. I might just grease in there as well. And I haven't, as I said, I've not, um, what do you call it? Taken this off, the, the paint off here. I just didn't want to. I thought we'll leave one original bit. That's in pretty good nick. So this thing's going to have to be pushed over centrally and there's a large body washer in there as well or thrust washer um, I'm not sure I'm probably doing this wrong but um, I don't particularly care I'll figure it out I'm just going to push that in so that that goes in is that right yeah that's pretty right there's a dog there, which I haven't pulled off. I'm leaving that. And there looks to be, oh, there's the knob things for the handle. I've got to put these bits in. And these actually quite, there's a few bits and I've actually forgotten how it all goes. Yeah, they sit in there. There's a washer that clips on there. When you turn this, there's a little spring, which is this guy here. Where the heck does that go? That goes in there. So, that is gonna go. Is there a thrust washer in there too? Yes, there is. Right, let me just get my head straight. Uh, that faces up, so that faces down. You can see the imprint from this thing here, and I've just dropped my spring. Right, that spring has got an open end and a closed end, so the closed end is going to slide down there. The open end is going to go into there. I might put it that way. So it's facing down. We're going to throw that over there, and that's going to go in like that. And that should... Go like that. So if I turn that guy, those dogs come out. Spiffy. Right, okay. We've figured that bit out, that's cool. And there's this nut that goes down there. So that's cool, so that bit's done. If I put him up that way and move that body washer into the center somehow, like that, that's cool. All right, so we've got the handle, which I had blasted and I've painted. It's got a couple of little scratches on it, but I don't really care that much. There's this as well, which runs on the inside of that. That little dog in there goes inside of these things. I can't find the photo. I thought it was on my phone. It's probably on the camera I'm using now. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Well, it probably does, but for this purpose, I don't think it does. Uh, that is going to go down like that. Okay, I need to be clean for this. Okay. As far as I'm aware, that's just the end of it. Okay, so that's working. I don't know. Well, I might just lubricate that a bit. Um, let's just scratch the complete ass out of everything, but. What are you doing? I think it's going to be good enough to put on there. I've just got to put that uh, knob on and throw it down with the socket. I've just got to find a socket that will fit in there.
that should be right. We'll put it back on. And that's another step closer to finishing all these silly mowers. Got to clean up. This degrazer stuff is brilliant. I'm going to actually turn the um, bench around. Where's my other rag? Where's my other rag? Hang up this stupid bit. Because um, it's all sort of scratched up and pretty, pretty messed up. And I'll copy those values there with gauges for the Fords. So underneath here, I built a new bench ages a year, or a few years ago now. And um, so I'm going to turn it around so I've got a nice fresh bit of laminate because this looks pretty messed up. Let's give it a rough clean. It's much nicer like this, although I'd mess it up in a few weeks if I lift it like that. Um, that stuff I prefer to this. What's the new stuff? Anyway, I'll put it all back and tidy it up and we're good to go. Well, this one's not what I hoped. I just threw it together out of all the spare parts. It's the muffler I tacked a little pipe onto and <laughs> painted it and used, you know, leftover bolts and bits and pieces like that. I don't know what happened to the adjuster rod between there and there. I think I might have lifted the hydroblaster. That was the scratch up base. We were going to get it going, but the only problem is the exhaust I've got isn't going to work with it. Um, for a start, you can't put the handlebar on. Um, if you look down there, but not just that, these studs don't reach down through the bottom. I can take those things out there just there temporarily, just so I can sit it there flat on a bench. But it doesn't, it doesn't work. So I can't use that base, use that engine, because it's not an 18 engine. But it doesn't matter, I still reckon it looks alright. Um, not unless I modify it, then I can sort of put nuts on the bottom, but I'm not going to bother. I think it'll be, pardon me, gosh, in addition. I think it'll be okay the way it is. But you can see it's fairly rough. Uh, it would look good with the white pool starter top when I eventually get an impulse one for the Worsley mower. But that was another example of sort of leftover colour. It looks grey, but it's actually blue. But I actually don't think it looks that bad. This is Ivy. She's got a red eye. Ivy. See? You're not the prettiest girl in the world, are you? Looks around the skin deep and ugly goes straight to the bone. <laughs> oh my god, she's risen. <laughs> right, let's have a look. Need a hard rubbish pile for that. Right, mowers. Um, started putting stickers on. That looks absolutely nuts, that one. Although I'm disappointed with these because that should be mounted lower down. But if you do that, the bolts are exposed. I thought they were bigger. Maybe I put it in the wrong spot. I don't really care that much. I think it's going to be fine. That's a champion, that one, I love that. Um, so this is a little Tirana one, and the Wolsey one, which I haven't decided what stickers to use on those. It's got a Series 71 on the side, and we've got our little catcher stickers. Um, I've got to get the rest of them out, and the other thing is, that was only temporary. This pool starter, zip starter. So, today's testing day. But there's going to be a storm, and I need to make the lawn again, because it looks terrible. And you look pretty terrible too, but we're good. Well, a bit of the home straight. I've got the rest of these stickers. These are incredible, these things. They're so good. Um, but I couldn't get some of the ones I wanted. Um, that's a kit for the other thing. Where are the catcher ones? Here are the catcher ones. The quality of them is great, and they stick really well to this acrylic. Um, and sometimes when you buy stickers, they tend to stay on the backing plate, on the backing paper rather than the, the thing here. I'm just going to place them. And sometimes you get these now crooked. Now, he recommends using a clear cut over them because these aren't in service. I mean, I can clear them, but I'm not going to bother. But they just finish the thing off beautifully. I am low on one of them, that's these Mark 3 160s, um, and that will go up here, we need to get it in that little circle. Now the satin finish, they don't adhere nearly as well in this satin finish, so if worse comes to worst in the future, 
I will put a contact adhesive under there, and that's not even perfectly centered, but I don't think it even matters. Where's my tea? Um, <coughs> so the rain's in. I might as well put some stickers on. Originally, like that green thing over there, I picked these for the front, and I think that looks nice, but it misses those things there, which are traditionally covered up. There's the Contessa, which I might put that on the other one, on the older style one. Um, and there's this MSAA one, I remember this as a kid. I might use that, it's not really what I want, but it doesn't matter much. I've got, I can't find my engineer's rule, um, which I needed for the top one, but I've just found this Mathemat, which says Peter Anderson 10B, when I was in year 10 in 1982. This sticker, I've just put it back on the backing, is radius at the bottom, but not on the actual white bit, so I need to sort of do something about that to make it work. And so I'm just going to follow the appropriate radius, which isn't that one. Here is this one here. That's pretty cool. And just draw that radius there so I can just cut it. My wife's got a, um, a photograph trimmer. Which, it's like a, a hole punch, you just got to click on this and it takes the correct radius off. But we're just going to have to do it like this. It doesn't matter much. I mean, at the end of the day, if this was an $80,000 Holden Sandman, you'd have to get them right, or a GT or something like that. Put on the mowers. Jeez, I'm not doing this well. The scissors are sliding off this this stuff here, but look, what can I do? I'm just going to have to go with that. And pulling off. And stick him down, which isn't very good, but that'll have to do. So, just about make him look a little bit more complete. I might use one of these and just trim it off so it just says Victor on the front. I think that's going to be fine. Um, and so we'll trim that up accordingly and just pop him on the front there. And I think that'll do. I'm just going to get a razor blade, a new one, and tidy that up a bit in there. Eight restored Victors. So, leading the pack, this is our daily. I've mown lawn eh, four times of it since. It's made up of all the worst parts, and it is brilliant. Upgrade from 125 to 160, um, using an engine that was out of the orange utility from Norm. I didn't pull it apart and fix it, I just put it straight in. Had a look around it, it was fine. Bores look great, all good. What was my favorite? Um, some of the stickers I'm not wrapped with, but End of the day, this one's turned out beautifully. Gainer 160. It's looking very, very good. Very sharp. Um, so we're going to gas this one up and see if she runs. This one here, what we colloquially known as the Wolseley one, has got the wrong sticker. I wanted the green Superpower 125. It's only a 125 engine, but this one is great. It's going to lose its zip starter and get an impulse starter. But at the end of the day, it turned out looking wonderful. I'm very happy with that. Uh, it's a 125, did I mention? Yes, I did, and I forgot to put a plug in, so I better go and do that. This was the worst, and it's turned out to be my favourite. Celestial. This is the LJ Tirana colour. Lime green metallic. 160 engine. Uh, fully rebuilt, like all the rest of them. I've actually used 18 clamps. I didn't like the clamps that were there before. And I had a spare set of 18 ones, so I chucked those on as well. This is the Mayfair from next door. It was on a rubbish pile. Um, we've given that a nice going over. A 125 engine, we haven't uh, rebuilt it. This along with that um, daily drive one, daily push one, um, are the only two that had decent engines in them where everything was just sound. So I just put it back together and threw it in here and gave it a cosmetic restoration, including the bars, beautiful. They've all got powder coated bars. Now, this is a bit weird, Rosie, uh, my daughter, wanted me to put the live sticker from a Toyota Starlet. This is the Victor Starlet. <laughs> it's a 125, rebuilt crankshaft, all this sort of business. Um, was the original engine out of the one I had, uh, which was the daily. So that is ready to go as well. The Victor sticker on the front's a mess. That was a mistake. I originally put it down with the live thing is, but yeah, it doesn't matter. If I need to order a few more, I can. Um, that wires off. Some of the ignition wires are off. 
Um, I'm just going to start with this point. I'm not going to spend another few hours sorting out, you know, kill switches and all this sort of stuff. I just want to see if they go. The utility, which engine came out to use in the daily. This has scored another 160. I'm short on 160 stickers. There's supposed to be one there. Don't have it. But again, ignition wires off. There wasn't continuity. It's a G3. This was a G4. And of course, that's another one that needs to switch sorting out. And one which we won't bother about for a moment. And the 18 with uh, later model Series 70 or 80 wheels. Uh, this was made from a box of rubbish out of the shed. Um, rebuilt 125 engine. New bearings, seals, everything. Just the same as all the rest of them. So I'm pleased with the look of them. But in order for them to make their way onto this rather bad shelf, we have to see if they run. This shelf, as I mentioned before, has far too much overhang. I rushed it. I couldn't be bothered taking it apart and widening the legs out or putting the legs forward, which I could have done, but I didn't. I can put a bit of RHS in the form of a cleat right across the front. That'll brace it. And I kind of like the overhang on it anyway. Um, very quick to make. We should also pull this out too and start it up. And there's a bit of RHS down there, but not too much. How much do I have? Mm, you're not quite enough. Anyway, doesn't matter. I'm just going to put a bit of fuel in to start with because I'm a bit nervous about them leaking all over their nice paint jobs and unprotected stickers. Now, I've also written the oil up, the fuel up. It's got more oil in it than I would normally run. So I'm just going to pop a little bit in. Well, I've only got a few of them going at the moment. This is a one, two, five, one, two, three, five. A little trainer one. And of course, the old trusty. I've got to do something about this cord. I've pulled out. Won't retract, so something's gone wrong. I've got to pull that out. Going. So, have we got a mist, a haze? This one is not starting for some reason. I don't know why. That could be a timing issue. This one's pouring out the bottom of the carburetor. So I know what the problem with that is. And I know what the problem with that is. This one I'm not sure. And that one's the full starter. So I've got to investigate half of them. But these ones here that are running, they can go back up on the uh, on the shelf. I'll just let them quit one by one.
had very little wear on it, so the baffles are probably still intact inside. It's just a beautiful car. Taking the top off this one, and it's like there's no tension there. It's like the spring's either broken or come off. I need to get in here and have a look. I've got some spare parts for those, so I'm not too worried about it. Oh, sort of. That's another success. There's just a few I've got to play with and I reckon I'm good. Rosie's here with Munro, her pig. And we're just filming the kind of outro. The, this guinea pig is so tame. It almost talks English. But it sits there and it, it comes onto me, crawls onto you and then lies down like a dog. It's quite phenomenal. Um, or he's quite phenomenal. Now, Rose, I've got to talk about these things. Right, here we go, our hero mowers. These are the ones that decided to work, including that one there, but I'm not filming it because it's ugly. That's the daily, of course. These other four have been perfect. I've repaired this zip starter cord as well. Um, so that's all operational and fine. Um, they started with minimal fuss um, and what surprised me actually that celestial that was the worst of everything and it's actually turned out to be rosie my favorite out of all of them um the mayfair is just gorgeous the starly one runs beautifully they all run so well i'm very very happy with them right so these are the three naughty guys that decided to sleep in today they weren't going to start up now one of the problems i've got the 18 needs gaskets for the carburetor i think that's all it needs i had trouble tickling it the fuel tap's holding fuel, the tank's beautiful, it's got lots of compression, rebuilt engine, all the rest of it, the same as all those as well. But the float could be sinking, it was pretty badly damaged, and the gaskets. So that's a fuel related issue. This one here, the Contessa, the Wolseley one in the centre, has a G3, and I struggled with it. There's a small set of gears in this cover here, so when you turn the throttle, they sort of work, and then the um, governor can take over if it needs to and it's not working properly. The other thing is those two, I think that one, I'm not sure, but I know that one has an adjustable timing plate, so that could be out as well. So these, I've, I'm going to uh, get going. I'm not gonna bother at the moment because it's dark now and I need to pack up and I need to get a video out because it's taken ages. Um, but they're not gonna be difficult to do. Uh, maybe I'll mention it in a future video or whatever. I do have three two strokes, four strokes, sorry, um, or two four strokes. Sorry, one's got a Briggs, it's a Victor, and the other one is a lovely Super Swift. Um, no, I've got three. I've got two with Kirby's and one with the Briggs. So we can do those later. I'm not worried about those at the moment, but I do want to get these three running. Well, I've left some up there. Um, for example, this Mayfair, I've had to put it in that way, just so it clears the roof. This has, um, the rubber pipe and the old one, the original one that came off, was just so kinked. It was pretty bad. Uh, the others, the Wolsey one, we've got to look at this one here and the 18 there. Uh, down below, we've got our little lit up display. There should be some period out there or whatever. I can't be bothered doing that at the moment, but sometime maybe. Um, and they were on like champions. Same with the one above. Um, 
as well as the dailies. So we'll sort the other three out. I'm not particularly phased about them, but they are looking rather lovely. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I actually have enjoyed this far more than I thought I would. I knew I'd like it, but I didn't know I'd just really get a kick out of it, and I did. It turned out to be wonderful fun. So, you know, um, that's it for now. The next video is going to be more about a car. Um, better get that blue on the road. And also get into those guards, which I've been dreading doing, but they need to be done. So whatever the case, I hope you've enjoyed this. Take good care of yourselves and I'll see you soon. What do you reckon? She haven't. <laughs> <Jesus. laughs>